You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get the last word. As part of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATV, this is March the 26th, 2018. With you today is myself, woe is me, Carl, and the always wonderful Joel. I like it. I like uh, that, you, that you're embracing it. I'm not woe is me today, though. No? No, I'm a champion today. You are? Yeah, what, I am. Of life? I, you know what? Some days, yes, uh, but today I am a fantasy hockey champion coming in first place. The first time either of us have won the league that we do with our listeners. Oh, well done. Just kidding. So angry. Our <laughs> listeners are the worst. <laughs> How can they the, not beat you? You gave them one job this year. I know. It is to not beat me. actually the worst. I'm not. I don't want to alienate everyone that's listening right now. Oh, uh, how about just the other ten people in that league? Yeah, who lost to you? Who mm. do I need to call out? Oh, you mean who did it? Who didn't? Who? Did, yeah, uh, Kristen <laughs> lost to me. Um, <laughs> she lost this week in the finals. Um, Kristen, shame. Then Nate shame. lost to me in the semifinals. Come on, Nate. Oh, no, sorry. No, he didn't lose to me in the semifinals. He lost to Kristen. Mark. Mark lost to me in the semifinals. Come on, Mark. And then uh, you. You lost to me in the first round. Yeah, well, that's understandable. My team <laughs> was very injured and bad. Okay. I shouldn't even made the playoffs. Well, you did. You made it. So does this mean it's over? Like, we're not doing the Fantasy League anymore? We've just retire just, on top? Just retire on top. We we need to find something else that the listeners can beat you at. Sure. They beat me, what, two out of three years in this league? I'm all right. Uh, I'm all right retiring on top. Maybe we'll do it again next year. Didn't we do like, didn't we do one where we each had teams one year? Yeah. Technically, these were still teams. So like the divisions, we just left the names as Team Carl and Team Joel. Um, but we didn't, it wasn't the same though. No, it was not the same. This was uh, both both me and Kristen were in the same division. So I'd, I'd already wrapped up the division championship. It was just playing for pride. I won by one point. What was nice was uh, some guy by the name of Connor McDavid had nine points this week. Uh, that kind of solidified my victory. And Pekka Rene with a shutout. So shout out to those two for helping me win fantasy hockey. They're definitely listening and are very happy right now. They're just like, oh, my goodness. I just got mentioned on the fourth line podcast. Well, it's, it's good because you got a shout out. You've you've alienated literally singles of listeners already. I, so, no, nobody believes that I actually hate them except Brad Marchand, probably. Yeah. Well, now he's not going to listen anymore. He's unsubscribing. <laughs> Do you think do you think he was a subscriber at one point? <laughs> I think that there I don't think that any Boston Bruins fan after more than 5 episodes is still a subscriber to this show. But that's okay. You can't please them all. There's 31 teams out there. If there's one fan base that won't listen to us, the other 30 are more than welcome to rip on the Bruins. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think we've talked. We've we've either, we have definitely talked about it, whether it's been on air or not. We've talked about how we're okay if Bruins fans hate us. Yes, that is uh that's some. We've accepted that. That's fine. See, and that's why no one should be sad that I don't know what I was going with that. Let's move on. All right. <laughs> this is <laughs> so, Joel. We are. Even closer to the playoffs, let's start with uh, some happenings from last night's game. Uh, for those of you who have not seen, head to the Twitters and search Anaheim Ducks Overtime. And you can see, or or the Google, just find a video, find a GIF of what we are about to talk about. Joel has his hand up. 
Yes. I would, I would uh, suggest that our listeners go to Bing. Bing? Yeah. Okay. Is that the official search engine of the Fourth Line Podcast? I don't know. Oh, I just had a I just had a really good joke that I would gonna that I could have said, but I think it would have made more people upset, and so I'm not <laughs> going to say it. <laughs> All right. Um, while while people are pulling up that video, we'll give them a second to pull that up. We'll let everyone know about uh, ATB Financial, the great supporter of the Alberta Podcast Network. Uh, supporting shows like this one. Um, and they support us. They support the community at large. They support hockey all across Alberta. And uh, whether it be minor hockey or professional hockey, they are a big part of the sports scene in Alberta. If you head over to atb.com slash listens, you can find out uh, some of the ways that ATB can help you. They want to know how they can help you uh, and be a part of your banking experience. So thank you to ATB for their support of the Alberta Podcast Network, and for being a great bank that likes to help people. So now that you've pulled up that video, now that you've, you've binged it, um, you can watch and see that over time in that game, Anaheim Ducks won the draw and just went back into their zone. It sat there, right? They just kind of hung out for about a minute and 20 seconds of the five-minute overtime. And the reason why, why did they do that, Carl? Well, the reason they did that is because someone, you know, we we I've already talked about how great a week Connor McDavid had. He was on the ice, and they said, "You know what? We're not going to do. Give him the puck." So they Smart. just sat back. Yeah, you should. You should. You know, possession. Everyone's talking about their fancy stats and their possession. Well, Anaheim had great possession numbers last I'll, night in overtime. Their their Corsi was through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no one was no one was coursing against them for that minute and twenty seconds that they held the puck, um, and so they just kind of waited until they were forced to do something, which made for the worst overtime I have ever seen in my life. So this led to a number of questions for me. Number one being, why did it take so long for someone to do this? If you have the other team's best player on the ice and you're like, you know what, we're fine with like. Go into the shootout. Let's give that guy only one chance instead of burning us in overtime. Why do you think it took this long for someone to blatantly do this? I don't know. There are teams that have done this before. This is not the first time, but it has not been that blatant. Like, it hasn't just been like, we're just going to sit here. Where was it? There was a game years ago. Like, was it the Flyers versus Tampa that they did the same thing? Yeah, Guy Boucher did that. So... Uh, yeah, so I, I've, like, teams definitely do it against the Leafs when Matthews are on the ice. I would imagine teams would do it against the Avs with McKinnon. Like, I don't know, like, teams, like, I would imagine Patrick Laine, Alex Ovechkin, teams probably do this. I just don't think it's as blatant as it was. Right, like, you're cautious, but not just, we're literally going to sit here until you leave the ice. Yeah, and... It worked. Right. It did, yeah. Sort of. I, although I think McDavid was still on the ice, but he must have been tired. He was just skating around. Oh, why didn't the Oilers go and get them? That's, That's the other I question. I always wonder. Like, just maybe just push the puck a little bit. Yeah. McDavid's fast, I thought. I thought he could, like, so if he gets out of position, he could just get back into position. Well, he's he's also smart, so he won't he wouldn't be out of position. He wouldn't put himself in that situation. Well, if he wasn't putting himself out of, in, if he wasn't putting himself in a bad position, he wouldn't be on the Oilers. <laughs> Set you up on a T for that one, <laughs> on a T. Um, uh, so, like, do you think, it, like you said, we saw it a long time ago with not a long time, a while ago, um, in that fly, infamous Flyers uh, decades ago Tampa game. Do you do you think that there's anything that the NHL needs to do to make this stop? Like, is there yeah. is there something that needs to be done to make people like? Do we need a shot clock? Do we need um like the N- NBA where you need have eight seconds to cross half? Is there something like that that we need to add in to force the pace of play? Uh, get rid of the loser point and first person to score in the shootout gets both points. So just do it like 
<laughs> sudden death shootout. Sudden death shootout. So basically, the home team. If you're the away team, you can't you can't just sit back on the puck because you're always going to choose to shoot first. Obviously, you, and so so just do it. Okay. That's, t- that's the worst idea, and <laughs> nobody is going to go for it. <laughs> there's a there's a lot going on there for sure. Um, I think that there are ways that you can do it. Certainly, getting rid of um, the loser point would make that a thing, right? Or if you if you made it where, honestly, this is a an artifact of three on three now because you've made it where you have the great players become greater, right? When Connor McDavid, you're playing five on five, he's only twenty percent of the players on the ice. But you make three on three, he's now thirty three percent because numbers. So you just you make them more important at those points in the game. I'm too confused with what just happened. I don't. Sure, yeah, Carl, I agree. <laughs> Not math, Corsi, high danger chances. <laughs> You've now you just listed every analytics thing you know. I know Fenwick, high danger chances, shooting percentage, Bazingas. Is that a thing? Nope. Uh, no. Some of the, some of those were right though. Oh. All of those were right. No one uses Fenwick anymore though. No. It's That's just all Corsi all the time. Poor Matt Fenwick. Did you hear, did you see the quote amongst the Leafs coaches about Corsi this week? Was about Polak? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so Mr. Assistant Head Coach DJ Smith, who I just found out existed like 2 weeks ago or whatever, And now he's everywhere. Now he is all over everywhere. I guess like Babcock was in a scrum and he came over and he's like, Polak laid a big hit last night. What does Corsi say about that? Or something like that. It was just like, it basically made it seem like the Leaf coaches have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Just <laughs> big hits better than shots on net or even attempts. So I'm I'm fairly certain they don't actually believe that, but it was pretty comical. Yeah, they they have to be in on what Roman Polak is, right? You would hope. Oh, I'm fairly certain. And like for all the Roman Polak hate, he's actually like played like a competent eighth defenseman the last second half. <laughs> well, well, that's good. Only there's only two guys who should be in the lineup over him now. That's not bad. I know. So like as opposed to everybody. Like the beginning of the season, everybody, like you and me. Anybody should have been in the lineup instead of him. Yeah. I don't know. They're not going to change. They're not going to do anything about three on three because of this, though, right? No, I don't think so. But it, I, I would not be surprised. Like if I was a team, um, I would certainly take this opportunity whenever I can um, to to make this happen. Like if it helps me win the game, I don't really care how I win the game. All I care about is winning. I don't care about if it looks bad for the fans my job's to win fans are going to be happy if i win right the nice and like the thing is like this doesn't matter in the playoffs so that's like that's at least the saving grace of this is that it's dumb it shouldn't happen it's annoying but there's no chance of that happening in the playoffs right and i think if you you know you see this at the end of games in the playoffs though, right? Like you'll sit back in your own zone. This can happen at any point in a game. This is not something that's special just to overtime, right? This can happen in the third period when you've got a lead. It can happen at any point in time. But it's harder to do five on five than it is three on three. Truth. Yeah. So I don't know. I I did hear what this made me think of was a conversation I had with someone uh, this weekend. And it's a, a bit of a secondhand tale that they told, but it was from a, a former NBA official and the the story as it goes. And um, I'm, sh- I'm sure someone has heard this before, but if not, um, they were talking about, it was, I think a retired official talking about what his job is as a ref. So he said his job, number one job was to keep players safe. That's the first thing he was supposed to do. Second job is to put on an entertaining game for the fans. So at what Ooh. point is there anything that an official can do to try to make this happen, right? Like 
they're the ones in control of the game. They're in the ones doing this. Do you think there's merit if you're doing that to a delay game penalty, or is that excessive? I think if it's if you go like as far as the Ducks went and like or like the I think it was it the Flyers that did it that stood in their zone or is it the Lightning that it was did the Lightning? So like, but I like I remember the light like they just literally parked behind the net. The Flyers weren't going to go after them, so they just stood there. At that point, like if you if you're standing still for like 15 seconds with the puck, I can see a like I wouldn't be upset about a delay a game penalty because that is the most avoidable penalty ever. So if you're getting that, it's your own fault. And I would think like if that if their officials are going to go to that point, I would assume that they would probably give like a verbal warning like, "Hey, advance the puck or you're getting a penalty." I would hope or think, right? Like you're going to you're going to tell the players. And if they don't from then, then consequences they, are happening. They do that when guys pin the puck against the boards. Exactly, yeah. They, they tell you them can to hear them yell the and move it, move it, whatever. So, yeah, I could see that. Like, now, refs take it too far sometimes, and so they'll probably abuse that rule. They'll just, it'll just be like a guy they don't like. It'll be like three seconds, and they'll blow the whistle. <laughs> they'll right. be like, ha, <laughs> delay a game. I could totally see that happen. Dennis Weidman's playing men le- men's leagues <laughs> hockey 10 years down the road, and he's getting delayed game will calls all the time. <laughs> oh. I yeah. was trying to think of who like the guy was that the rest would actually hate, and like that's the guy. Like, that's, yeah, <laughs> except he doesn't get to play NHL hockey anymore. So no, shocking. That's um, yeah, yeah. I, I I would be in favor of that, or even just blow it dead, right? Because that's what they'll do if it's pinned against the boards. A good example you had there. So blow it dead and uh, and go from there. I I always have good examples. I know. Yeah, like you sure I came up with the Weidman example, but you you were pretty good. It was really, we make the best team. We <laughs> yeah. are like, we're, we call ourselves the fourth line, but really we're like, we're much better than that. I would hope so. Yeah. Um, other things happening in the world of hockey this week. Uh, Don Cherry did something crazy. Does that surprise you? No, I'm not entirely sure. That are we sure Don Cherry knew what he was doing? I think I can guarantee Don Cherry didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> he are we, is are we ever sure that when he opens his mouth, he fully comprehends the logic behind what he's saying or even what he's saying. Don Cherry should probably just go away. It's about that time, right? <laughs> it's well past. He's 84. I think. Is, it's he's well that, past he's that old. He's 84 years old. Not saying that all old people should just go away, but this one probably should. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like poor, like poor Ron. Like at this point, like how much, like how much do you think Ron McLean makes to like essentially look after Don Cherry enough? Yeah. I think, I think Ron McLean makes more than enough. To babysit Don Cherry once a week. <laughs> really? I don't know. I'm not convinced. Um, according to this, this website says it. Oh, there we go. Okay, Don Ron McLean. No, still doesn't have it. Um, this website alphalife.me. You're terrible. Never go there. Bing, let me down, Joel. I tried. <laughs> Bing, let me down. Um. Ron McLean's supposed net worth is half a million dollars. That seems low. That's it? <laughs> that seems low, yeah. That's not Oh, no, that that's his salary. Too. That's his salary. Oh, that's still not enough. I think that's plenty. To look after, like, just for Coach's Corner or, like, that's his salary for everything is, he does. That guy works all the time. Yeah, because he's got his, uh, what is it, hometown hockey on sad- Sundays? Yeah, and he replaced that other guy. That Strombo? was really yeah. He was awful. Yeah, I wanted him to be so good. He wasn't. He, he just didn't. It didn't work out. Uh, I don't know. I so okay. 
I, most people have to have heard, like at least in Canada, have heard what Ron McLean said, yeah, right? So what he, what he said? Not is, Ron McLean, Dar- Don, Don Cherry. Cher- Ron McLean hasn't said crazy things yet. Don Cherry uh, went on and said uh, they were talking about uh, the Ottawa Senators and how uh, with Eugene Melnick and the exact quote he had was he's nuts to stay there he'd sell out quebec in a heartbeat so he's talking about the fact that melnick should leave town and disappear in in reference to um some of the the comments he said melnick's thrown millions of dollars into that franchise and there's seven community rinks around ottawa that he's bankrolled and that fans are giving him a hard time and that's when people started to get upset because Eugene Melnick is not the one that built the community rinks. It was the Ottawa Senators Foundation that built the rinks. So sure, the Senator's name is on it, but Eugene Melnick, those, that money comes from 50-50, from auctioning off, you know, game worn jerseys, things like that, right? Um, any sort of fundraiser for that goes and builds community rinks, puts on things like that. So that money is literally from the fans. And Donald Cherry decides that that's enough evidence to support Melnick stealing the team away from said fans. It's, I think you look at it and you're like, should the Senators leave? Like from a business perspective? Sure. But from a fan perspective, you shouldn't do it as a screw you to the fans. That's not what this is. They, they've started this Melnick out campaign. They've put up billboards in the same way that, uh, the New York Islanders have put out Garth Snow billboards. Like, all they want is a, a good team. That's all they're really asking for. And I don't think that that's too much to ask. I think that, yeah, if you're making business decisions just because you're upset at fans, you're probably not making good business decisions. <laughs> but if you're making business decisions... Because it would be best to leave Ottawa than all the power to you. That's what I think, right? I think it's the best business decision to leave Ottawa. However, I'm not a multi-millionaire that owns an NHL team. So what do I know? <laughs> right. I also know that he bought the team for $120 million. And Forbes says it's worth $420 million. So to me, I'd be like... I've tripled my money. I should just cut my losses at this point. If there are even our losses, I know these guys, like they say we're losing money and then you actually look and they've fudged the numbers so that it looks like they are. And then we have a lockout. There's no way the Ottawa centers are actually losing money. Right. I can't imagine that. It's, I don't know anything. Of, I, I, there's no way. Here's the thing. Values of teams don't triple over 15 years when that loses money. Right? Like, that's that's not how that works. I'm not a businessman, but that sounds correct to me, Carl. <laughs> right. Something something that's a, a money-losing venture doesn't suddenly become that. Yeah, so if they want to leave for making money, sure. I You know, Quebec's got that arena. They've been trying to woo people there. But Quebec also had a team leave already. So, you know, I, I think, is it a slam dunk that they would do great? No. Probably? Yes. Okay. Here's the big question, though. Does Don Cherry leave Coach's Corner by his own choice, or does he finally say something that is just so over the line that he gets fired? See, I think being, like, being factually wrong is not enough for him to get fired. Because people are factually wrong on sports broadcasts all the time, right? You listen to something, especially if you're listening to, um, like listening to fan or, a you know, a a team broadcast from another market and it's your team. Like if you would, if you were to watch, I'm sure, you know, if you've got the Leafs game on right now, you probably have the Leafs feed on, but if you were to put on the feed for the opponent, there'd probably be a lot of facts that they have wrong, right? The odd time I'll be like, oh, sure, I'll watch not the Avs feed when I'm watching a game. And it is shocking the lack of information that they have and knowledge. So it doesn't surprise me when Don Cherry doesn't fact check things. When, you know, we saw George the Rock 
look make an idiot of himself making statements about Taylor Hall and rehab this week on Twitter. Like we see people in hockey media not fact checking all the time. So that doesn't surprise me. That's not enough for him to lose a job. He would have to say something offensive. And yes, I think that he will. And I think he's crazy enough that he, he thinks that this is the shtick that everyone wants, right? Cause he's done it for so long. He's done this same thing. I think he thinks this is what people are asking for is crazy Don Cherry. And it's finally run out. I don't think it's fine. Like, well, I guess it, I, I can't believe. So, so if you want to go, uh, I uh, used our good old Bing and searched up uh, controversial comments by Donald Cherry. And the article that I have pulled up is from 2013, and it's got his seven most um, outrageous comments from then. I but love yet, I love the the timely content that Bing provides to us. It's so I nice. Know. And yet there are definitely articles that have been written since then about the racist things that he said. How is this guy still employed? Yeah, I have no idea. This is this is it's like because we're talking about it, right? People are going to tune in to see what he says next. I don't think there's many people who are turning off Coach's Corner. Because of what Don Cherry says. I don't know. I, I, like, I haven't watched Coach's Corner in a long time. And I watch the Leafs game on Saturday night almost every week. But I always disappear during Coach's Corner. We'll, we'll see. I, I honestly think that he should be gone. If he disappeared, I would not be sad. Um, we will see what, what comes of... Don Cherry's media career. There's a comment he made in 1989. If he said today, he would have been fired. <laughs> that that for sure doesn't surprise me. I'm fairly certain of that. Anyways. Well, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Poor um, Ron McLean. Yeah, that's all right. He's making half a million dollars for it. It's not worth it. I think it is. I would sit there for half a million dollars. CBC, call me up. Elimination Station. There's two weeks left. We have two more teams to eliminate, Joel. We've we've gotten here. So we have eliminated all but eight teams in the Eastern Conference. The East was much easier to sort out, right? As it stands right now, we're recording on Monday night. So this is, what, just under two weeks left in the season. Um, the Florida Panthers are sitting three points back of the Devils with two games in hand and a injured Roberto Luongo. This, there, I'm a little worried about that one. Right. Um, I'm a little worried. So he he's banged up. They say that he should be back and, and better. But this is also a 38-year-old goaltender with a history of injury problems. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried. That, like right now, we're currently, I believe we are correct. Okay, so the, the eight teams that have not been eliminated in the East are still the eight teams you think We'll make it. I believe so. I think we are correct, okay. right? So far. I, I think so. I think, you know, sure, the the Panthers are winning right now over the Islanders. But tomorrow the Devils get to play the Hurricanes. So they both get easy games, right? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, like, the teams that are actually in playoff spots are the ones we haven't eliminated. Oh, so, like, yes, so correct. far we've been yeah, right. Yeah. So where in the West we had to pull someone out because – you know, Carl was just too sad that his abs weren't going to make it. So he willed them into the playoffs. <laughs> Here's So no, without looking at who the Devils play the rest of the way, here's who the Panthers have to play. They play, and I'll say, I'll say the difficult team. So there's, after tonight, there's eight more games for them. They play the Leafs, they play the Predators, and they play the Bruins three times. That is, and, and the Bruins are going to be playing because they're playing for first in the Atlantic, right? And then they get they get Buffalo, Ottawa, Carolina. So they have five, you know, five very difficult games, two fairly easy games, 
and one like you should probably win it, but maybe you won't against Carolina. So from that angle, like the schedule is not easy for them. Uh, the Devils, the team that they're most likely to catch, um, have, you know, a moderately easier schedule. Um, they have games in hand though. That's the they thing. They do, they, they'll have one game in half tonight, but the Devils, their difficult games, their games against playoff teams are against Pittsburgh, Washington, Toronto. So they've only got three out of seven against playoff teams. So, um, a little easier road for them to the playoffs. Um, so to me, you know, even if that game in hand, you consider that game in hand one of those Boston games, then it doesn't really matter. So yeah, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're right. Florida won't make it. They're still eliminated. So where do we go? So we have to, obviously we have to eliminate a West team. Yeah. There's kind of one obvious one. So the ones, let's, let's go like wild card down. So Colorado, St. Louis, Los Angeles, and Dallas. Dallas has got to be out of it. Dallas like they're, is they're five points back and have lost four games in a row, and have and like have played one more game than the wild card teams. They're out of it. They're not getting. They're not climbing over the Kings and St. Louis. It's right. over. It's done, Dallas. This is it's a get lock. rid of them. Lock it in. For some reason, I felt like I don't know why. I think there was an episode that we talked a lot about Dallas, and I think for like for some reason, I thought we eliminated them, but we must not have. Did we? I don't think we did. I don't think we did either. We just must have been talking about them because, like, like I think for a while, like, were they ever? Or what division are they in? Are they in the Pacific or Central? Yeah, they're in the Pacific. So, like, for the longest time, were they not? Like, were they even in? They weren't even were they above a wild card at one point this season? I feel like they were. Maybe they, maybe they weren't. I'm sure at some point. Um they've been in that that wild card spot for a fair amount of the season. Okay. Well, I how do you fix this team? I think the way you start with this team is you get a healthy Ben Bishop so, like, it's the same thing from last year, right? The the number one reason that this team struggled down the stretch was their goaltending, right? Like, Kerry Lettinen played terribly, and Ben Bishop wasn't there to give him the support that he needed. Because Antti Niemi was there. <laughs> so, sh- shockingly, they parted <laughs> ways with him. I don't know why. Um, so, to me, and it's not like you can say, there's there's no way that you can just go and say, get healthy Ben Bishop, right? That's not a thing that you can say to them. That just doesn't work. And Ben Bishop, even when healthy, didn't really play that great. I'm very pleased with what he gave this season, for sure. So you are, I like, when I was watching him, it never really seemed like he was playing that great. Like, so um, he, did he, did he turn it around in the second half? When he, like, how many games did he end up playing? So he's he started fifty one games, um, so certainly like the lion's share of that work. Um, he, you know, nine sixteen save percentage, two four nine goals against, um, and a uh, a goal save above average seven above Kerry Lettinen. So um, that puts him as a bona fide number one goalie, and Kerry Lettinen, who played twenty five games as a goalie. That is clearly below average. So if you're going to give Ben Bishop enough time off, which you you need to, you need to have someone better behind him. That's not is, Kerry Lettinen. Is Lettinen finally done? He's got to be. Yeah. He's got to be done. That deal's got to be done, right? Well, there's he, only one way to find out. Bing it. He is. This is the last year of his deal, which is probably great. Like, that's a huge... Well, that's not only is that the fact that you don't have to start Kerry Lettinen, but you also don't have to pay him six million dollars. I know. So they could turn Mr. Lettinen six million dollars into like a one million dollar backup and a five million dollar defenseman. Like they could turn, they could do really well. They're gonna have to replace Ham Hughes and Lettinen, which I think is good. Right. I think it's good sure. that you're replacing those two guys. And this team, like, 
they have they have the studs up front that they uh, you need. Yep. Like I don't know this team. Maybe it's need is depth. What maybe what like goaltending and depth. Goaltending and depth are for sure because like you said they have the studs. But this was the, this was a team that greatly relied on Jason Spezza to be a core piece of the team, and Which you can't always rely on. And he's not anymore, right? Like he's thirty four years old. He has twenty five points this year. That's not what they need from a guy who should be their number two. Like there was there was times last year he was being used in a number one center role, right? Now they've moved Sagan back to that, so that's great. Um, like we Jay- all make mistakes, <laughs> <laughs> right? But they're like Jason Spezza should be better for them. So, um, you know, having him, he's in he he will be in the last year of his deal next year. So I think you can start to look at into the future, um, what to do if they were to bring in, you know, another center, and they tried with Martin Hansel, and that didn't work out either. So maybe. Going into free agency isn't the solution, but this is, like you said, Joel, this is a team that's going to have about, what, four and a half, or not four and a half, almost $10 million in cap space opened up by Letton and leaving, Ham Hughes leaving. If you went out and you, even if you were to just be like, we're just going to sign people, if you went out and sign, spent $3 million on a centerman and $7 million on Mike Green. That this there, team gets better. Mike Green's not making seven million. Well, there you go. So I'm I'm generously giving Mike Green seven million dollars. I think as as the number one defenseman on the market this offseason, he'll get fairly well paid. If you especially if you want to keep it short like he did in Detroit, he he just came off a three by six deal. So I think looking at a three by seven deal is not out of question. How old he's not gonna make that. He's, it's going to be closer to like, if he gets three, it'd be like five at the max. He's not going to make more than what he's making in Detroit. I think you he could make the case on a short deal to make the same or more. Obviously, because that was my guess. But um, <laughs> so yeah, what like what do you think? I I think if they were to make a play for a defense like what a free agent defenseman a center you continue to work and develop some of these young guys see what they turn into and then you know you you see what you have in a goaltender somewhere yeah and yeah you just get a cheap goalie we all know that you don't need like your backup doesn't need to make a lot of money just Just claim calvin pickard off waivers it's very easy or malcolm all the time waivers like yeah. Just the first goaltender that goes on waivers after the season starts, claim him. That's what you do. I, that is a great idea. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying. I'm looking at the uh, defenseman free agents this year are terrible. That's why Mike really, is going to probably make like seven million dollars. That or just nobody gets paid. They just go the. Uh, hard the other way yeah just be like we're not gonna let anybody make any money yeah i think there are a lot of las vegas nights yeah that's a, that's a thing that they did um i think like like there'll be green um toby anstrom john carlson those are like the big name guys that are gonna be out there john carlson's gonna get paid by someone that's gonna regret it could be dallas could be Dallas. It's gonna like he's. I think John Carlson's probably better than Carl Alsner, but like, doesn't it feel like Alsner all over again? Is it the car? Is it literally just because they both have Carl? Is this your anti-Carl bias <laughs> coming out again, Joel? Because I'm sick of it. <laughs> uh, it could be. Um, <laughs> you could sign. Brandon Davidson, or just trade a third round draft pick for him. Just, just claim him on waivers later. That's what, and then yeah. and then trade him for a third round draft pick. Johnny Ardia could go back there. That worked well last time. Cody Franzen, Roman Polak, Roman he Polak bring, is available. He can bring them all to Corsi. That's what you need to do. <laughs> uh, playoff team or not next year? Yes. 
I think so too. They're like, and it, just like any team, it hinges a lot on Ben Bishop. But like, if he can be even somewhat the goalie that he was in years past, this team has so much talent. Like, it has enough talent to be a playoff team. If you get, because what I gave, I gave the numbers of how many he's played. If you can get sixty, yeah. I'd say 62 starts. Like, he's had 51 this year. If you get, I guess, 65 starts out of Ben Bishop, that's so maybe, that's what you need. Um, but that's not, like, he's only, his career high is 63. So maybe, like, 60, what he got this year is the pace that you could expect Ben Bishop to give you. So, like, what if they, what if they gave him 55 and then went out... And got like I don't even know who you could like. I'm looking at these goalies and it was, uh, like I don't know like Hutchinson, Kadobin, Pavlich. Those are the kind of range. Those guys are going to get paid more than uh, no, they're not. Those are all about million dollar guys. I was trying to think like, could you go and pay a guy a little bit more and get like that that top like that higher tier goaltender? to be that backup for a year, but don't, don't sign him to like, don't go and do what they did with Lettinen and sign Niemi for five years. Just sign him for one year, a little bit more than your standard backup. But there's not really those guys on the market this year. No, there like, there are guys if you wanted to, like you could ease, I wouldn't say easily, but if you made an offer to the Toronto Maple Leafs, a respectable offer, one of those three backup goaltenders that you have, could be made available, right? Like, it's not out of the question. It's not like they're saying, well, you offer us a second round pick for one of these guys. They're not going to say no, right? And like, even that is likely higher than you would need to. So, please offer that for McElhenney. We will give you McElhenney for a second round pick. Absolutely. It's a little steep, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you'll think about it and probably say yes. Yeah, we will probably do that. I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah, um, so that's that's the Dallas Stars. They're pretty close. Obviously, they got eliminated in the second last elimination station of the season. So next week, it's one of the Blues, the Kings, or the Avalanche returning to the elimination station. It's not any of the Avalanche. We can't do it. We, they can't be in it twice. No, does that means we are eliminating a team bef- like a week before the end of the season? That is one hundred percent what we will be doing. That's scary. Yeah, I'm worried about us. Which team do you think we will be eliminating next week? I think we'll be eliminating the Blues. I also think we will be eliminating the Blues. But Jake Allen decided to play good hockey again. So if Jake Allen keeps it up, then that's the obviously that's the only way that they're going to make it. So Carter Hutton, not enough to carry that team, shockingly. I know, I know. Um, so you mentioned the the fact that Boston is continuing to play strong hockey because they need they can they can potentially still win the Atlantic, um, and especially with the fact that tonight in Arizona, Steven Stamkos is not in the lineup for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Is Steven Stamkos injury prone, and is he going to be ready for the playoffs? He'll probably he'll be ready for the playoffs. Is he injury prone? We have already answered that question. That is a hard yes. I just I find it so obviously you you have that buff, right? They're two games up on Boston. They pretty much have home ice locked down for the first round, right? Twelve points or sorry, nine points up on the Leafs. Um and they're playing Arizona. You can sit um, you can sit Vasilevsky, you can sit Steven Stamkos when you're playing Arizona, especially when the Leafs are losing against Buffalo. It's true. Um, so, you know, they've, they've essentially have home ice locked down. To me, I would not be worried. And if, if I'm a Tampa fan, I would honestly be grateful of the fact that they're giving these guys some time to whatever they have as injuries. Give them a game or two off to rest up. There's nothing that's going to hurt them. Um, especially if you get them back, right? If you gave them all this time off, that might be a little stretching it, but you know, let them practice, keep them out of games. I think that's fine. Are you, would you rather be a Boston fan or a lightning fan right now? Like 
In what who, regard? Who who's more likely? Who, okay, like who's more likely to win the Stanley Cup? Which team? Like which team are you? Because like for the longest time, like basically all season, it's been all Tampa all the time. It didn't matter what was happening in the West. Didn't matter what was happening in the East. Tampa was winning the Stanley Cup. That's all anyone talked about. Right? It's how good they were. And now all of a sudden, Boston is right there. They don't. Tampa doesn't look otherworldly anymore. Yeah. And they're like they're not currently sitting in the president's trophies position. Nashville passed them there, um, and that everyone's talking about how Nashville's going to win now. Like that's the right, yeah, the flavor I think it, of the week. It is very obviously those two teams separated by three points this late in the season. Very comparable teams, um, quality wise, or I guess two points separate them right now. Um, for me, I would still rather be a Tampa fan. Um, partially because they've been so consistent all year. Boston struggled, went on a great run, and then has played still quality hockey to end the season. I like the fact that Tampa's just, they've just been steady. Like, they've done it all year. There was no lulls. This is who they are as a team. Um, and they're younger. Like, there's a, a fair amount of guys on Boston that I look at and I'm like, you know, wearing down as the season goes. If you're giving your, what, 22-year-old goaltender time off at the end of the season versus, what, 32-year-old Tuka Rask, I'd much rather have that. Or, or, you know, you give Victor Hedman a night off versus Chara, right? Like these, sure, Boston's decor has gotten a lot younger, but Chara's 41 years old. That's not some, 41-year-olds are not designed for a cup run. So, so you... Based off of what you're saying is, as a Leafs fan, I want to play Boston. You do want to play Boston, yes. Yeah. I – see, the thing is, I think like like a long time ago in the season, like January, December, I would have been with you. Now I'm like, give me either of them. Beat either of them. Now, again, you're losing to the Sabres right now. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Just, don't matter. Just checking. Just just wanted to remind you. Everyone loses a game every now and then. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'm not. I'm just. I'm asking you the questions. I don't. The, <laughs> the only the biggest problem with the Leafs this year is they have been like locked into a playoff spot for like forever. Right. So but, they haven't had a game that's really mattered in a while. Yeah, like they have been. Sure, they could move. Like they were never going to be moving up. Yeah. Like they've like they've they've been locked in third in this division for forever. Doesn't really matter. We haven't had a meet. Yeah. Like we haven't had a meaningful game in months. So they will not tell you that, which I appreciate. <laughs> right. <laughs> but as they're, a, they're not literally saying we're mailing this in, but also yeah, a little bit. Um, I'm glad you say that. Uh, everyone can lose a game because. My team lost seven seven one to a team chasing them in the playoff hunt. That's um, not good. Is that something that you want to let happen? No, that's arguably worse than losing to the Sabers right now. <laughs> the, the Leafs leave to the Sabers tonight. It changes nothing for the playoffs. Yeah, all it does is somehow make the Sabers like moderately respectable, which gets them a worse draft pick, which is hilarious. So. <laughs> to be I'm, to be I'm fair, the, the Sabers are some. They're three points back of Arizona still, so they've got last in the league, almost on lockdown. They're they're just terrible, hey? Yeah, they're pretty bad. Um, yeah, the this week was a a roller coaster of emotions for my Avalanche. Touch on that this, for a second. This week or like <laughs> okay, the last this, like this eight season. years? I think. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah, because it was like the 10-game win streak, and now you've got this where they're playing great hockey. Um, the game against Vegas on the weekend, with Vegas currently being the team they would play in the first round, was as playoff hockey as a regular season game can get, you know? Because you're testing both these teams, though. Colorado's playing for their uh, their playoff lives. Vegas is, you know... They're pretty much cemented as the division champs there. Six games up on San Jose, but six points up on San Jose. So, um, yeah, it was, it felt like these guys were testing each other out for what you would get 
come regular season time and i was i was looking forward to it so if that's if that's what we get that'll be a, a great series and colorado won so that's also nice they play again tonight do they not they do yeah a little home and home um so that's gonna happen late later this evening vegas vegas games for some reason always start at eight o'clock also that's a national game in canada for everyone that's Which bizarre. is weird because there's no Canadian teams in it. That's so bizarre. Um, this is you want to point out how the Leafs are maybe mailing it in. So the Leafs, ju- the Sabers just took an offensive zone draw, and the Leafs put the fourth line out there against Eichel and Polak. So like, <laughs> <laughs> just asking for him to score. There's just like so like. They were they put the fourth line out against the Sabers first line and the third defensive pair. Like when they didn't need to, wasn't an icing. It was just yeah, this seems like a good idea. So it's, it's not. Uh, it worked. It didn't. They didn't score. It was okay. But yeah, they're they're maybe mailing it in. These are true statements right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know who didn't mail it in this week, Joel? Our high sticking players. Oh, our listeners the rebound yeah um mr kg came through winning again this year so um as per you you know we, we've sent him a puck last year he won a mini stick um so there's a there there's the standard rule let us know send us a dm if there's if there's something we can can do for you let us know but we're gonna try to We've been talking for a while. This isn't this isn't a a thing that's based off of a repeat winner. This is something we've been trying to think of all year to kind of tweak high sticking, how we can make this game a little bit more engaging for people. So we're gonna make a change now to test it out and try Before to keep the, it for the playoffs. So yeah, because we wanted we wanted we were like we we don't want to debut this in the playoffs. That sounds like a terrible idea. That's like leaving your starting goaltender out just like we're not going to play him until we get to the playoffs right like we're just going to rest freddy for the next two weeks don't do that yeah. toronto don't actually mail it in that bad you want him fresh so what will be happening we will have the exact same questions do we do we want to do so there was there was two different options we had joel and one is to change the way that we crown a winner and two is to change the criteria that we had to get points. Um, I. What are your thoughts? I'm. It doesn't matter a whole lot to me. Okay. I'm good either way. Okay. So, the the ideas that we kind of thrown around. One is a lot of times people, especially when we're doing like thirty days of high sticking, it's a long time, right? If you haven't played from the very beginning, or you miss a game or something, you really know. Like I'm, I'm out of it, right? If Matt from Reasons Are Several forgets to submit his weekly games, he's out, and he's yeah. not going to be able to win again. Which we know he's eventually going to win again. Um, so what we're going to do to make it so that no matter when you play, you have a chance. But which I like, I like that, right? Because I, I don't want, I don't want it to be. I'm playing on the last day, and I know if, even if I'm right, I'm not going to get it. So. What we're going to do is keep the scoring for this round exactly the same. So you still get three points if you pick the game-winning goal scorer, two for the first assist, one for the second assist, but every point you get is a name and a hat. And then it's just, and then it's random. And then we draw a name from the hat, we crown a champion. So this way, but we still are rewarding people who play frequently and are good right so you're good so like let let me let me pull it up because i i ran the numbers today to see so you're you finished first right now there's 131 names in the hat so that's that that's how many points we handed out in the last three weeks that's a lot of points yeah that's a lot of points um Man, they're so good at this i'm terrible at this yeah i know so kg he he won. Thanks, thanks for confirming. That. Yeah, I know you're just the worst. He he won with 21 points, so that gives him like a two in 13 chance of winning. So you still got yeah. a great chance, but 
Logan in second has a 15 in 130 chance. So everyone has a chance, and we're going to do this. This is two weeks. We're going to the end of the regular season here. This is how it's going to work. So we're going to try okay. it. I, I'm, I'm excited because it's going to keep everyone engaged, keep it fresh for people. If you play on the last day, you get it. That's three points, three names in the hat. You've got a chance at winning something. I like it. We'll draw on the show. So tune in at the end of each session. We'll draw a name, see who it is. So uh-huh. is it time? Let's pick our, our Pavel Burries, unless you've got yeah, something pick. else you want to. No, 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 no. Let's do this. Pick some Pavel Burries. We're going to pick the games that we want to watch. Pick your game winner. Get the points. Do the thing. Do the thing. Win the win the merch. We've got mini sticks. We've got pucks with our names on them. All not the, like all the Carl and Joel. Although maybe we should get pucks with our names on them. Just just our name. Like yeah, we could just buy like blank pucks and put our names on them. That was actually the very first prize handed out on this show. Was there a, you go. a puck with names on them. So, uh, you Tuesday night. There's one game I'm looking at. Nashville, Washington, or San Jose, St. Louis. Those are there's two that I'm looking at. So which was it? So, one of those? Well, one of those games isn't a thing. So that's so I don't think it's that one. Minnesota, which one? Minnesota, Nashville. You said Nashville, Washington. Oh, not Nashville, 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 Minnesota, Minnesota so. and San Jose, St. Louis. Which one of those two was the one you were looking at? I was looking at San Jose, St. Louis, because that's like like I lo- I want to see teams that are fighting for the playoff because those are play that's a playoff game. Absolutely, it is. Yeah, for sure. Um, similarly, there is only one game on on Wednesday night that has two playoff teams in it, Joel. So we are going to go with the Philadelphia Flyers and the Colorado Avalanche. You're the worst. What do you want to watch your? Leafs and the Panthers. Uh, that's what I am going to watch. My <laughs> Leafs and the Panthers. Okay, that's fair. I'm yeah. fine with the. I'm fine with you. I, I'm. I've come to the fact that I don't have a, that much of a say in the Pavel Berries anymore after last week's debacle. Okay. Well, look, we're 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 about to determine how much of a say you actually have, because on Thursday night, you're not breaking the rule. There is Do not game. break the rule. Right. So that's what I'm saying. I'm. I'm just saying. That's how we find out because if I don't break the rule, then you know you still got a chance. Plus, once the once the playoffs start, we will be playing the Bruins every game. But that's because we're playing every team. Exactly. That's not so. There's only two different. more weeks with this rule, and then if the Bruins win, they get to stay. Earn your right to keep playing, Boston. I'm pretty sure they have already clinched a playoff spot. I was gonna go Jersey Pittsburgh. All right, that's good. Another another team fighting for for a playoff life. Yeah. Um, if you if you want to go Tampa, you can go Tampa on Friday, but I wouldn't. I also wouldn't. I would. I would probably go St. Louis again on Friday. Okay. Or Kings Anaheim. Oh, Kings Anaheim. That's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Rivalry yeah. night. Rivalry night. That's it. <laughs> Good catch. Um, uh, actually, let's... after after our debate about uh, in season rivalries being formed, there was a. Uh, a strong case being made for the fact that Kings ducks and that, like proximity for location is what made that one a thing. But um, that's a, that's an in-season rivalry that's been made. Okay. Saturday. There is a lot of games on Saturday. Is that the 31st? Yes. Yeah. Um, I like, I like your game actually. Okay, Toronto Winnipeg. Let's do it. Sure. That I'm not super excited about that game, but that's okay. But that's like that's a that's an actual test. Like Buffalo, Winnipeg's been good. Winnipeg's a good team for sure. Um, so coming to there's a actual Sunday. There's only what four or five games, but three yeah. of them are games that I like appointment television almost. Washington, Pittsburgh, Nashville, Tampa. That's where I'd go. And Colorado, Anaheim. So Colorado again. Playing against a team that Anaheim's borderline wild cardish as well, but um, Nashville, Tampa, the two best teams in the league. I think you have to go there. That's where I would go. Which uh, leaves us to Tuesday night while we record this game or while we record our show. I think it's it's hard not to say that the two teams fighting for a wild card spot when they play each other 
do they have to get picked? You just want to pick Colorado twice. Is there not a bet? Is that not the game you should be watching? Colorado at Los Angeles on Monday night? One week left in the season? I don't know. The Sabres are putting up a good fight against the playoff team. They could do it again. All right. Well, there it is. Colorado, Los Angeles <laughs> on Monday night. Those are your Pavel Bray must watch games of the week. Uh, we're getting, we're getting down to it here. So play along on Twitter at fourth line podcast with the number four in it. The fourth line podcast.com. But before we wrap up the show, let's just let everyone know about some of the great things happening over at the Alberta podcast network. I'm going to pause here while I open something up. I'm going to see the fifth, the fifth line this week is when we're supposed to, uh, promo pod summit, but this was like a hockey filled episode. I thought it was really, I think, I think it's been really good though. I think so. Yeah. Um, Joel, there's lots of events happening in and around the Alberta Podcast Network. Did you know that? I did know that. Obviously, you knew that. You are a wise, wise individual. One of those is happening Alberta 7. There's a DIY video content and discoverability workshop with the host of That So Maven, Andrea Becca. Uh, she's going to teach you how to improve your DIY video content and get in front of the people that you want to reach. So if you're someone who does video content, make sure to head over, head over to albertapodcastnetwork.com slash events for information on that event and everything else that you can do there. Uh, lots going on in and around the Alberta podcast network in Alberta. So lots of things happening there. Head over to our website, the fourth podcast.com for great podcast content. We released our WHL preview for the playoffs, an episode of that podcast this week, as well as uh, some great content from the writing side as well. Obviously on Twitter at fourth line podcast, Facebook.com slash the fourth line podcast for the always wonderful Joel. I am woe is me, Carl until next week. You know, we love Alberta so much when we say Alberta seventh instead of April seventh, boom city. (laughs) 